We are down in Southern Utah. We're in Springdale, and I'm taking you to King's Landing Bistro, where Chef Thomas and his wife, Chef Fu Win, are crafting a menu that is full of love and passion. Can't wait to talk to Chef Thomas. Are you ready to get your taste on? Let's do it. Chef Thomas. Katie, welcome to King's Landing. Oh my gosh, am I out of my mind excited to be here. Th I love this it. has been a long time coming. We tried to get you last fall, couldn't make it happen. We're here. You're going to introduce us to everything you're doing so right. Yes, let's do it. I'm ready. I'm starving. All let's right. Make it happen. Welcome. Thank you. Well, Chef Thomas, your co owner with you and your wife, would you say? We are owners and chefs. Owners we, and we chefs. We do this together. We spend the whole day in the kitchen together every day. We have a very small crew that we consider our family. We do this together. That's this is so special. Our charcuterie board, I take a lot of pride in. I do a lot of charcuterie in house. I make the duck pate, rabbit loin and porchetta. We have a truffle salami over here. We've got gorgonzola, Italian blue, Humboldt Fog, it's a goat cheese out of Northern California. Cool. And St. Andre Triple Cream, similar to a brie out of France. Uh, I got house made pear jam. Those pears came out of the trees right over there. Oh my gosh. Um, house made onion mustard, some pickled red onions, dill pickle to go with the meats, some fresh fruits with the charcuterie. Can't go wrong with a beautiful glass of wine. We do have a full liquor license, okay. so we've got seasonal cocktails, we've got local beer. We have some beautiful wines from one of my former servers, Cherie and John. They have this winery in Dameron Valley. Well, it's like you look around and you have this amazing landscape. I mean, Southern Utah is just, it's a, such a blessed country and it really makes you feel like you're at one with everything. I mean, you feel so good down here. Exactly. And so to be able to bring food or for your former server to be able to till the soil and actually start doing wine, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. It's I'm so happy for them. It just is they are for us. Everyone in this community, they're here to elevate one another. They're here to make one another better and to support each other. And so when you exactly. say you have local products throughout the menu, I mean, one of the ways I was introduced to you was from our fantastic mutual friend, Ed Allred, yes. who is basically helping Southern Utah chefs get their hands on incredibly fresh produce that you may not have had access to, let's say five or eight years ago, through his company, Heirlooms Only. Here in Southern Utah, everybody has their own little plot of land and there's fruit trees and there's pecans and there's Ed down the street that's producing beets and fennel and the tomatoes that I can't wait to see this coming June. So good. It gives Passion. me chills because it's, it's just this beautiful connection. Um, and then we get to savor and enjoy it. Um, what else do we have in front of us? Um, here's our octopus dish. I put this on the menu six years ago when we opened. Not really sure how Southern Utah would take for octopus on the menu, but everybody loves it. Our tuna over here. It's beautiful. Kind of focusing on beans for the season. Do you mind uh, if I get in on this? Go it's ahead, so gorge. There. Ahi tuna, green beans, cannellini beans, edamame, blood orange, wasabi vinaigrette. And then this beautiful and then our pretzel. pretzel. I've always had a passion for beer. I uh, have my level one Cicerone. I put this on the menu in October and the people love it. When I see the eyes of everybody when I bring it to the table, they're like this. Zion Canyon Brewery, I make two different sauces with their beers. IPA cheddar cheese sauce, and then we have a sour beer mustard. So this is an international travel destination. You have people coming from all over the world. The food is so elevated, it actually compares to the experience of being in the park and that is phenomenal. Yeah, that's and that's what we wanted to create was not just a place to fill your belly after the hike, mm -hmm. but to create an experience and there's something for everybody on our menu. And your dining room is so fabulous. You have this art that celebrates time and place. We've got local photographers around, uh, David West, David Pettit, Michael Fatale. We're just here to support the locals. You yeah. know, they have an art that's different than ours, but you know what, their art, I put it on my wall. My art, I put it on the plate. Yeah, it is like a community and a connection. So you come here and you're not just tasting 
um, food, you are tasting time and place and you're integrating those experiences into your overall experience here and you're creating a memory. So funny you say that, that's what my good friend Bernard used to tell me all the time. We're not here to nourish your soul, we're here to create memories. Yeah. When I was 18 years old, I moved to New York City and I decided <clears throat> that I just wanted to take some time off before like going to school just to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And one of the first things I did in New York and one of like my quintessential, I would say still to this day, top 10 dining experiences happened at a restaurant in New York called Le Cirque. And where did you work in Las Vegas? At Le Cirque, I opened the restaurant in 1998. I worked there for five years. Then I transferred to their sister restaurant, Circo, which is the Italian version of Le Cirque. And another five years there and worked with amazing French Italian chefs just making my way through the ranks and 18 years in Vegas and five or six hotels opening. You're very humble, but like the Bellagio, the Wynn, these creme de la creme yes. hotels of Las Vegas, what comes with that is this stamp of the master chefs and restaurateurs that are invited into those spaces. Yeah. And you're standing shoulder to shoulder with them. And like gives me chills because now here you are, humble, like this amazing pretzel in front of us, but completely one of the best things I've ever tasted. So what a special full circle for you. It's, it's been amazing, you know, like I say, it's a dream come true. I know this is sort of like your signature, so you do it a lot, but would you show me how this beautiful octopus uh, gets to the table? Of course, let's do it. I purchased this octopus, it's from Spain. Uh, came out of the Mediterranean, it is farm raised. Okay. Um, it's four to six pounds, but I have this court bouillon on right now. So we've got mirepoix, carrot, onion, celery, some lemon, some fennel fronds, a little bit of basil inside, and a couple tomatoes. Spanish octopus is the best octopus you can find, especially the one that comes out of the Mediterranean. Oh my gosh. Cover it with the mirepoix. Once it comes to a boil, I'll turn it to a very, very, very slow simmer for okay. about an hour and a half to two hours okay. until I can pop a knife into it and slide it out without it coming out of the water. So here's the finished product. Okay, through the magic of TV, we have a finished product. Comes out, I chill it down, and I portion each tentacle to okay. about three and a half ounces. Beautiful. A little bit of gross. oil. The thing about octopus is the more charred it is, the better it tastes in the end. Hottest part of the grill, you see it's smoking, that's exactly what I want. I can smell, it smells really amazing. So then I'm gonna create the garnish for the, the dish, and then I make this chorizo in the house. That's a smoking hot pan, so it's not gonna take long for that chorizo to cook. So then I got some Yukon Gold potatoes over here. Beautiful. Toss them with a little bit of thyme, rosemary, and sage, extra virgin oil. So the thing about the chorizo is the fat kind of renders out. Oh. It flavors the potatoes, and then I'll throw the octopus in the pan in the last second. Oh, that's brilliant. And that brilliant. fat coats the octopus, and it gives you that much more flavor. I love it. All right, here we go. The octopus looks great. Ready to go. Potatoes are caramelized. Chorizo is cooked. So I'll add the last ingredient over here. This is called pepper annata. It's a braised pepper with some garlic, onions, and capers. Nice. And then this also helps deglaze the pan a little bit. So we have our house-made romesco sauce. It's oh. basically uh, piquillo peppers and it's almond base. It's gonna give you a little spice and also a little acid, which is nice. Exactly, yeah. the acid kind of breaks up the richness from uh, the chorizo and the potatoes and the octopus. So there's our dish. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna finish it with a little salad to freshen it up on top. Beautiful. Little salt, salt pepper, little pepper. Lemon cello is just basically a lemon vinaigrette. Oh, I love it. Arugula. Again, a little bit more acid, a little bit more um, kind of like that peppery arugula that's yep, gonna the peppery, complement all your flavors. I love flavors. arugula. I do too, it's one of my favorites. Right on top. Beautiful. My favorite, these pickled red onions. Oh. It just shines through and it finishes the dish. Chef, I mean, thank you so much for just taking us behind the scenes and showing us how this gorgeous dish is made. I mean, it tastes so good at the table and now I know why. Thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. It's been a pleasure.